Hello, 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 Tofu. Welcome. <clears throat> yeah, you were just on that, that other site with the uh, Morse code. That's fantastic. So <clears throat> um, thank you for watching that. I think continuous wave, uh, short wave is going to be a very important way of communicating after SHTF. And so I think it's great that you want to learn Morse. <clears throat> so you have um, you have two different types. You have you have they're both Morse code is primarily an amplitude modulated signal, and it's continuous wave, so it's on off keying, and uh, that's where you get the did ah, alpha, you know, etc. Um, whereas uh, you have a sideband, you have an upper and a lower sideband, and so the kind of if you imagine you've got the carrier frequency then you heterodyne that you've got an upper side band and lower side band so this one transmits upward spikes and this one transmits downward spikes on amplitude modulation and uh, so those <clears throat> when you when you heterodyne it uh, and amplify it hello little lone pepper uh, then you have voice so <clears throat> the the continuous wave um, doesn't uh, doesn't do the same way as the heterodyning for a voice wave but uh, pretty good to go so some of my favorite people already here well welcome tonight we were talking about uh decline decline and decay we've got two short chapters uh but extremely hello butch graves uh, it, gosh you guys have gotten some some snow haven't you uh, there in colorado uh, but anyhow uh, two very important chapters water and fire uh, not very long but uh, but very very important. Hello Lisa B and hello Stray Kitten. Welcome, welcome. Um, so let's uh, let's just kind of uh, uh, talk a little bit about water. I, I want to read a couple of my favorite things that I highlighted in the water area. Uh, I, I think he he came they came across the authors came across with some brilliant statements that uh, I just want to uh, re uh, recaptured everybody. It says. Uh, there is no more or no less water on this planet than there has ever been. We're not going to get into the arguments of icy meteors crashing into the earth. Every drop of water that you drink has at some point in the past been consumed and passed on by another living creature. Um, so then it talks about water treatment methods. And it says Giardia is present. You can use chemical treatment, boiling or filtration. Uh, bleach can be used to treat the water by adding two to four drops of liquid odor-free bleach per liter of water to get rid of Giardia. Uh, the treated water will then need to stand for 30 minutes before drinking. If it's really dirty, then I would filter it first with a, with a uh, um, coffee filter and uh, get rid of as much of the muck out of there with a coffee filter as you can. You can also use a bandana for that purpose. So typically what will happen is if I'm collecting water uh, from either a pond or from hello black guns and gardens um, if I'm collecting water out of out of a stream or collecting water out of a pond <clears throat> or a lake or anything like that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the mouth of whatever my my uh, vessel is my bottle let's call it my water bottle I cover the top either with a um, bandana or with a coffee filter so that I'm getting as much of the stuff that would typically go into the bottle keep it from going in and just getting pure water. Uh, so that's one of the things that I do. Iodine is considered a better treatment for Giardia than bleach, but it takes longer. So five drops of 2% tincture of iodine per liter of water is sufficient, but then you have to let it sit for eight hours. Um, so one of, the, one of the main ones that I always look for is cryptosporidium. And uh, Remember, that's the one that infected a family member when we had sewage leaking into our drinking water supply uh, back in 1997. Hello, Triple G Farms, and, and welcome. Uh, so, so I always look for, can it filter cryptosporidium? And, and that's my number one concern uh, when I get any kind of a water filtration system. I always look at, is it 99 point and at least three nines percent effective at removing, removing cryptosporidium? Uh, what I did not know is that bleach will not kill cryptosporidium. However, boiling at 160 degrees will kill it. Uh, so boiling is always one of those fantastic options uh, that you have for, for purifying any kind of water. 
<clears throat> we were issued halozone tablets in the army. It talks here about halozone tablets and putting those in there. Um, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what, that can, uh, between cryptosporidiosis and, uh, and uh, dysentery, you can um, dehydrate yourself very rapidly because you're going to have diarrhea and, and liquid effusion like you would not believe uh, as a result of either one of those two. And both of those are caused basically <clears throat> from the, the mis maltreatment of sewage. <clears throat> commercial filters. The important thing to remember is that your filter needs to filter particulates down to the 0.1 micron level. So of all things, remember that 0.1 micron or better. Uh, this will remove giardia and other protozoa. And then finally, the last thing in, in, in water, before I go into my little show and tell and doggy, dog and pony show, <clears throat> is what they call SODIS. And that's two words, solar disinfection. Uh, so that's S-O-D-I-S. -S. And so a, a plastic beverage bottle like this that's been removed of all the wrappers that's three inches or less in diameter, uh, can um, you fill it up with water, put the cap back on it, and leave it in the sun where it's directly exposed to sunlight <clears throat> for six hours. And it recommends you move it, agitate the water every once in a while, every hour or so. Um, and that will kill the UV rays, uh, ultraviolet rays from the sun, will kill parasites and viruses. Uh, but, you know, <clears throat> and you're cooking off because you, you're kind of creating a boiling uh, uh, sensation with the lid off. That's why you want to have that pressure in there, and that's going to help kill uh, protozoa and things like that. <clears throat> so that's just kind of some of those things you want to consider. What we need to be considered with today um, is, is, and this is kind of a, um, I, I've done an awful lot of research into this. What do we do if there's fallout and fallout gets into our drinking water? Um, so that's been a discussion. And there's been, I, I, I keep putting out the same information. I keep looking for more and more information on it. I keep verifying basically what I've said in the past. There are two guys who have put out 20 minute uh, response videos to me saying this, but I'm going to say it because I can back it up and I'll put some links in the, in, down below. It's also in chapter six of nuclear war survival skills. <clears throat> Water itself cannot become radioactive. Okay. So here's what happens. Imagine you have radioactive salt. Okay. And that's going to be a product of the fission or the fusion <clears throat> that happens in the thermonuclear reaction. So that's when the fission and the fusion is what's caused, what causes the radioactivity. It's going to irradiate solid objects. <clears throat> Those solid objects are then going to fall back to Earth into your water supply. So think of it as salt. So it's not the water itself that is contaminated. It is the dissolved solids that are in the water that is making it contaminated. Does that make sense? So just as we can remove the salt from the water by boiling it, certain filtration and boiling techniques can be used, and even, even uh, sedimentary, uh, uh, putting, it, putting the water and letting it uh, develop into a sediment and just skimming off the top will also remove 99% of all the radioactive material. So, you know, water is not going to be as big a concern as a lot of people believe it's going to be, uh, simply because it's fairly easy to get rid of. Water itself cannot become irradiated. However, it can dissolve irradiated solids, and that's where you have the problem. So how are we going to get rid of that? Well, first off, there is one filter designed specifically for radioactive materials, and that's made by the Seychelles Company. Whoops, wrong side. There we go. <clears throat> so Seychelles has three different filters. They have a standard filter, an advanced filter, and then they have a radioactive filter, a radiation filter. <clears throat> the radiation filter will remove radioactive cesium uh, and, and a couple others. Um, <clears throat> let me see, cesium and, uh, no, I, I forget. 
But anyhow, there, there's a list of, if you go to the Seychelles site, they will tell you all of the radioactive particles that are removed from it. However, what I don't like is this is a drinking water bottle. So what's going to happen is this filter is going to collect all that radioactivity, and then it's sitting right there at your side. Now, it's not going to irradiate the water. <clears throat> okay, remember that. It's not going to irradiate the water. However, you now have all these solids that are irradiated in the filter. So it's not going to cause some, there is no more fissive or fusion activity going on. It's just emitting the rays, alpha, beta, gamma. <clears throat> and uh, so having the emitter of those rays that close to my body is if I had it in a pack or in a, in a belt or something like that, that's what would disturb me is because now I'm concentrating radioactive materials uh, fairly close to my body. So that's why I don't typically carry a radiation removal filter with me in my bag. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Let me get up here. Well, th thank you. That appears like that might be Triple G again. Yes, thank you, Triple G. You're just phenomenal. And I hope you realize that 90% uh, of all the money that you give uh, goes to different causes. So 30% goes to my followers and, and improving the site and all that kind of stuff. 30% goes to the food bank. <clears throat> and 30% goes to Catholic Charities. So uh, thank you very much for that, that nice donation. P there are people out there who definitely need it. So uh, now we can remove those radioactive solids. Now we can do that with a kerchief, with a coffee filter, or anything like that. As long as we're removing the, the salts, let's call it, uh, that have been dissolved into the water. So the better your filtration system, uh, the, remember the 0.1 micron or smaller, the better you're going to remove all those radioactive materials from your water system. Mm -hmm. Now then, <clears throat> if all you are worried about is radioactive uh, dissolved uh, solids, then this is the one that I have <clears throat> in my in my uh, garage. Uh, I got it at Costco, and it has two extra filters. Uh, but the, now, there's advantages and disadvantages to the zero water. It's going to remove all of the dissolved solids, and those are the things that are irradiated. But you're still going to have it in that filter, okay? So it's not going to irradiate the water, but you're going to concentrate that radioactive material inside that filter. So... Uh, I would recommend if you're going to do it, do it somewhere other than inside your home. So, you know, do it outside or whatever. <clears throat> Which brings me to another whole thing. <clears throat> Let's talk about the collection of water, whether that's going to be a rainwater catchment system, whether that's going to be uh, a catchment system in your backyard just from pure rainwater, a pond, a stream, or anything else. When you collect your water, have a container that is designated a dirty water container. So you're only going to use that container for collecting dirty water, okay? Then you're going to run that dirty water through some sort of a purification process. That can be distillation, boiling. That can be uh, a chemical treatment. It can be an ultraviolet treatment. It can be a filtration treatment. Whatever treatment it is, once you move it from the dirty through the filtration system, then you're going to have it into a clean water bottle. So any water bottle in, in our house that is not marked is automatically assumed to be a clean water bottle. The minute we take something and put dirty water into it, then we take a Sharpie. I have, one, I have a box of those big, broad Sharpies, and we just write dirty on the bottle or on the container so that we know that that has been contaminated with dirty water and we're never to use it for drinking or cooking water it must be put through a filtration system before we can use it. So, you know, you got to have two containers, one for your dirty, one for your clean, and then you've got the filtration process in between. Um, no, they're exp if we're talking about Seychelles, no, they're ex they're, their filters are expensive too. Um, you know, so that, that is another consideration. Uh, would I recommend you spend the money on their filtration system? No. Uh, I think there are other ways, you know, the goal zero will get rid of all those dissolved solids. 
It, however, the goal zero will not get rid of cryptosporidiosis or any other virus, uh, cysts or bacteria or protozoa. Okay, it only gets rid of dissolved solids. So that will be good for radiation, but not good for everything else. So now, if that's the case, if you know that it's only going to remove the, the solids, um, then, uh, you know, you want to put it through a secondary or even a tertiary uh, filtration or, or water purification process. Uh, well, thank you, Stray Kitten. Uh, let me see. Somebody asked a question. Okay, so the, the fallout, uh, uh, the fallout filter, any filter with 0.1 micron removal is going to be good for filtering out any dissolved radioactive solid in your water. Uh, I for, for for radioactive, you can use the the, uh, the zero water. Okay. So that's, you can get this at Walmart. You can get it at, at Costco. I believe they have it at Sam's. But this one is going to remove your dissolved solids, okay? And that's what the radioactivity is. It's a dissolved solid. It will not remove protozoa, bacteria, um, cysts, viruses, but it does do a good job with the dissolved solids. So I hope that's what you're wanting. Yes, 0.1. And so GGG Farms, there you go. Thank you very much. 0.1 micron filter or better or better. So uh, the uh, one that everybody talks about, um, little on prepper asked a question that, uh, so how does it compare to a Berkey filter? Uh, the Berkey filter is probably a Berkey filter. And then there's another company that's a clone of Berkey. Those are probably the best water filtration uh, and purification <coughs> systems on the market. And I do have a Berkey link down below. Uh, the reason I'm not mentioning Berkey is because for removal of radioactive dissolved solids, the Berkey filters are inside of the upper tank, okay? And so if I bring in radioactive water into my house and then pour it into that upper tank, that radioactive solids are going to be captured in the filters. And now I've got radioactive fissive material inside my home. So I don't want to use my Berkey inside my home to remove radioactive materials. I want to do that outside with something else. That's why I don't mind having a zero water pitcher out in the backyard. Uh, you know, if, if it collects radioactivity out there, it collects radioactivity. I'm just worried about getting radioactive uh, dissolved solids water into my home. And then I'll take care of the other things, uh, the other bacteriological viral things later. Um, so how long after fallout uh, before the ground is safe for planting? It totally depends on so many different factors. Uh, number one, <clears throat> your distance. Remember, there's time, distance, and shielding are your three protections against nuclear uh, fallout. So um, I believe it's every seven hours, every multiple of seven hours, uh, radioactivity is diminished by 10% or, or one-tenth. Uh, and then there's the, the, the inverse of the squares. So you have to con reconsider if you're up close, you get a concentrated dose. But now it's like a sphere and we're radiating all these rays out of that sphere. So the further away you are from it, those rays are going to be missing you. And so you're only going to get a portion of those rays. So it's called the inverse of the square. Uh, so that as you get further and further away from the object, there's less and less of that strong, even strong radioactive fallout pointed at you. You know, you're, you're a small target. The third one, of course, is shielding. So how much material is there that's going to obstruct between you and it? That's not appropriate for discussion about uh, agricultural purposes. So now the question we have to ask is, how far away from the explosion are you? What are the RADs, the amount of radiation that's landing on your property? And then the third question you have to ask is, what was the explosive material? Uh, so was it cesium? Was it, um, oh gosh, iodine. Iodine, was it uranium? Was it plutonium? Each one has a different half-life. And so it, you have to take a look at that half-life 
and that's what's going to tell you when it's good for planting. And and that you know you can get a, a, a table of of uh, you can look up half life of radioactive products, and it'll give you all that. The problem is you don't know which radioactive product was used in the explosion, so you're going to have to take it from the worst uh, case of of which one's which. Um, one of the ones that everybody's really popular with and everybody carries in their bug out bag is the life straw and this is an actual straw so one of the good things about the life straw is it does have a cap down at the bottom so that you can scoop with a normal water bottle down into the water and then this will fit and, and screw right onto the water bottle uh, otherwise you're going to have it and you're going to be sucking out this end uh, with the other end down inside the contaminated water I don't like having my face that close to contaminated water, and I'm not that sturdy. I'm afraid that I'd tip over and fall into the contaminated water. Um, Jennifer, I, I will do that. I will absolutely do that. I'll divide one into fiction and one into nonfiction. Uh, so I've got my guy coming. Hurdy Burke is going to be coming here next uh, on the 1st, I believe. No, Monday the 6th. So Monday the 6th, he and I will work on that, and we'll get that done on Monday the 6th. Um, so anyhow, that's this. Now this does take care of all of the stuff that we're talking about. It'll remove dissolved solids. It will remove, uh, cryptosporidium that will remove, you know, the bacteria, the viruses and everything else. This is a fantastic product. I just don't like having my face down that close to it. So another one you might want to consider, this is considered one of the best on the market is the life straw. This is a 12 liter bag. You can hang up in your home or you can hang it up outside fill it up with dirty water. It comes down through the filtration system and then you have a spigot so that you can fill up whatever the, the clean water system you want to bring into your home. Uh, my personal favorite, and I have two of them. I like it so much. I got one this way and then the other one they shipped to me this way. Uh, but this is called Survivor Pro. So Survivor Pro goes down to 0. 0.0. Um, let me see here. Where is it? Uh, I think it's 0 0.02 uh, microns. So it's even, it's one of the finest filters on the market. <clears throat> what it is, is it comes with a pump right here. So this is the pump that you see here. And then it's got two hoses. So it's got an intake hose and it's got a discharge hose. And I'm not sure. Let me see over here. Oh, okay. So this is, <clears throat> and then when you pull, when you push down on the handle, it sucks it through forces it through the filtration system, and then that way it's going to put it into your clean water bucket. This is my favorite of all of them. It's called Survivor Pro. So that's kind of uh, where I am with water filters and water filtration. <clears throat> keep all kinds of extra um, bandanas. Keep all kinds of extra coffee filters around. <clears throat> if you can get a pour-over coffee system uh, where you have that, that little kind of like... Uh, triangle or a cone that fits over a bottle or a pot with a coffee filter inside of it, pour your dirty water through that first. You're going to really save the lifespan of all of your water filters. Um, so, you know, I, I strongly recommend that. So uh, let me see, Triple LP had, had a good question. Let me, let me go back up here and make sure I answered it. Oh yeah, that was the, the ground safe for planning. Um, okay. Um, so LED, now there is a, uh, what's called a SteriPen. I do not have one and SteriPens don't put out LED. They put out UV, ultraviolet light. <clears throat> so supposedly the SteriPen, if you put it into the water and then activate it, the UV lights will sterilize all the protozoa uh, bacteria and viruses and kill them. So it's supposed to be 99.99% effective against protozoa, uh, bacteria, and virus. It is not effective against dissolved solids. Okay. So that you'd have to take it through something like the uh, uh, zero water to, to get rid of the dissolved solids at that point. Um, Yes, absolutely. And, and so, um, you know, they, it, almost anything, and, and packed the earth is one of the better um, 
uh, things that you know, you're going to use to protect you from radiation. Water, you can use water to protect you against radiation. I think it's uh, 12 feet width of water equals a one foot thick uh, berm of sand. Uh, but uh, but anyhow, there was, <clears throat> you know, oh, Jennifer, welcome. And she, uh, and, and she knows what she's talking about. She was a radiology tech. Yes, so... Uh, my favorite is uh, G Triple G Farms is the, the Survivor Pro, Survivor Water Filter Pro. Uh, uh, that's the name of the company, Hello Tofu, is uh, Survivor Filter. So this is, this is my favorite. I'll put a link for it down below in the comments. Oh, so this is, I'm sorry, I said 0 0.02. It's 0 0.01 microns. So I told you get 0.1 or better. This is 10 times better than a 0.1, okay? Oh yeah, LED is a is probably the best, uh, uh, most stable barrier between you and radioactivity, bar none. That is the best. Um, so you know if you have that, you you are you are if you have, I believe it's one inch of lead, then you're you are protected against everything. Uh, and so what they do is like for for radiation when they get X rays and everything, they have the the lead jacket, and uh, that's going to protect you against. Uh, any stray uh, gamma radiation that's from the X-ray machine. So X-ray and gamma are really close in frequency. And uh, so, you know, that's kind of uh, going to be your safeguard there. Okay, let's move on to the next chapter. And the next chapter is talking about fire. And they did a whole bunch of, uh, you know, how to do a bowl drill, a hand drill. Uh, they were all kinds of primitive methods of, of making fire. Uh, I have bow drills, I have hand drills, I have uh, <clears throat> more than, I have an, enough um, uh, ferrocerium rods to, to, to keep this whole neighborhood in fire for the next hundred years. Uh, but I, what I wanted to do is I want to talk about a little bit more common sense uh, things as far as um, fire starting. And it's very, very easy for you. So number one, uh, the, the common sense. And I always keep these stored in the plastic container so that that way there's no accidental pressure on the release valve and causing it to discharge. So I know that as long as they're kept in this plastic cover, uh, then I'm, I, they're probably going to be full whenever I need to use them. So I always try to keep them in the packaging in which I bought them so that they don't lose any of the, any of the uh, uh, butane or propane or whatever it is that they're using. But this is your number one friend. I mean, this is going to be, in my opinion, uh, the best bang for the buck uh, as far as fire starting. That, along with a couple other things. So I, it's gotten to the point here recently where rather than getting the standard Bic lighters, I'm getting this little bitty reach because it gives you a little bit more reach to get in and light tender in your fire than this does. With this, with this, you're going to have to basically light a stick or a branch or a leaf or a piece of paper and stick it in the fire, whereas this gives you a little bit more reach. Of course, even better than that is a long reach um, BIC. And so, you know, this is probably, for, for prepping in my opinion, this is probably the single best tool. Um, now then, let's go to Lee's favorites. And as you know, uh, I prefer anything that I can recharge using a USB uh, because I have a little Goal Zero portable charger that I can plug my USB into and recharge it. So one of the best things on the market is this. And this is a, get it open here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is a electric arc lighter. So it's USB chargeable. You've got four plasma arcs going across. You stick something else in and poof, it's going to catch on fire. Yes, Stray Kitten, you are. Absolutely. I um, When I checked in for acupuncture today, um, 
they uh, and, and it looks like it's getting worse and so it looks like i may have to have spinal fusion here in the near future but we're going to try to avoid that like the plague um and uh but i i told them um that on my make sure I, they put because they asked for my phone number again and i said make sure you put nafd after my phone number and she says nafd I, i've heard of mobile and home and what's nafd and i said not available for dating so she got a kick out of that uh <laughs> probably south uh Aren't, aren't you in Lampasas? And I'm almost due south of you down in, on 183. Um, yes, great deal, Dragon Slayer. Absolutely. Good deal. Good deal. And so then, you know, consider this one. The other one is, and I probably have a half dozen of these, the, you can't beat the Bic lighter. And if you read uh, Furfall, Aguirre's books, this was gold, not just in color, you know, also the silver ones. Uh, but, uh, and the same thing with, uh, um, what's his name in, uh, uh, Selko, Selko Begovic in, in Bosnian war, these were worth their weight in gold. And so, you know, I mean, just, this was what I used in the army. Um, I guess I need to fill it up, but this is what I used in the army when I was smoking uh, up until the time they came out with the BIC, which was, you know, I was probably about 73, 74, I guess they came out with the BIC. But, you know, I was happy because you didn't have this taste. But this is phenomenal. You know, this one can of lighter fluid in the Army. And I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day uh, in the Army. And so the, I had at least 20 lights on my lighter every single day. And a can would last me well over a year of, of, of lighter fluid. So I think that's just one of those things. So I ha have not only, you know, half a dozen of these lying around, uh, but I also have about three or four of these that I can just give away or trade or whatever. That, that's going to be my one of my barter items is a uh, um, Zippo uh, kit. And let me see where we are. Uh so the Gold Zero portable USB charger is phenomenal. Um, it's just a, a tiny bitty little screen, um, and, and it's about the size of a, a cell phone. And uh, so you can just plug your cell phone into it, or you can plug any other USB device. And as long as you've got sunlight, you're going to charge it in a short while. Um, Thank you, Jennifer. I greatly appreciate that. Um, so A American, not A American, um, Toolman Tim. Toolman Tim is doing the same fiction book series that we are. Uh, he's also doing A American's uh, book series. And a lot of people call it the Going Home series. The actual name of it's The Survivalist. We're going to be doing volume five uh, at the end of this month. And you can order that in the link that will be down below when this is published. <clears throat> and they are on book eight. So there are three books ahead of us. So there is one other book club that is doing the fiction books that I'm aware of. But I'm not sure if there's any that are doing nonfiction books. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for those kind words. <clears throat> and so... So what I would recommend there, and I do have one in mind because I have it out in the backyard along with all the uh, Burns-O-Matic things, but it's called Burns-O-Matic. And you can get it in the tool area of uh, Walmart. You can get the one-pound uh, bottle, propane bottle, and then it has the torch and everything else. I mean, it's just fantastic. And uh, so, yeah, sometimes if I'm in a hurry uh, to start a charcoal fire, I'll use that to light my charcoal file especially if I'm trying to do something with uh, um, my Dutch oven. So, <clears throat> uh, so this, uh, okay, so all of my Bics are liquid fuel. And then the uh, Zippos all use the liquid Zippo fuel. The only one I showed that does not use liquid fuel is this one. And that uses uh, electricity. That is, and you can recharge it through a USB charger. And that's why I like it so much. Uh, now, some of the other things, make sure you get some long uh, 
matches, okay? And then I, I try to pick up. I've, so I've got three buckets out in the back, out in the garage. They're just full of, of all of my fire starting equipment. And so I try to get kitchen matches. matches. Doesn't matter if it's strike anywhere or strike on the box. It doesn't matter as long as you got matches. Now, here's a secret. If you want to turn your strike anywhere matches into fireproof matches, then make yourself a double boiler and put a, a block of paraffin into the top where you're going to double boil it. That's a safety factor. And then you take your matches, and what you want to do is you want to get some, some, uh, uh, some sort of clips, okay, and a piece of string. And you're going to dip your, your match with the head down into the paraffin and then bring it up just so that the head and, oh, probably a quarter to a half an inch of the wood are covered in paraffin. And then you're going to don't want to lay that, lay that down or anything because that will destroy the protection. You want to hang it up by a clip and let it dry. And that will make it waterproof. Then if you get the strike anywhere matches, when you strike it, that, that's going to be enough pressure where it will take that paraffin coating off and it will light the match. It'll last a little bit longer because it's eating up the paraffin as well. But you've got waterproof matches that last a little bit longer in order to start a fire a little bit better. So I strongly recommend that. <clears throat> I When I go to Walmart or the store, I pick up these. You know, This is going to be a great barter item, I think, as well. Just 10 little boxes of, of, of strike-on-the-box matches. I think 10 little boxes like this, uh, this is maybe a buck and a half at the grocery store or at Walmart. But that's going to be a great fire-starting tool for you to keep in your kit. That's going to be a great barter item as well. <clears throat> oh, gosh, I cheddar prep. Well, well, first, cheddar pepper prepper, welcome. Now, that's the first time I've seen you. And, and so just thank you very much for being here. What a great group of people we have. And, and read, make sure you stay up with comments because we always get fantastic. I get fantastic comments and I always get challenged. Uh, we have such great people in here. Um, and so uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that that is, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Uh, um, I'm taking, so I have my, my third one here. I have to take these pain pills about every eight hours. And so here's my other one. And then <clears throat> I have to take sleeping pills. And oh, gosh, it's, <clears throat> so we're trying to avoid that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm using chiropractor and, and uh, uh, acupuncture right now. But uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Medicare only pays for 12 acupuncture visits a year. Yeah, 12. Well, I'm glad I answered your, uh, your your question. Yes, the good old reliable Zippo, my favorite. Well, you know, I mean, I've got so many favorites, it's pitiful. I, I, number one has got to be the electric arc uh, lighter because it's rechargeable. Number two, I would say is probably going to be the Zippo because you can, you know, just get just get all kinds of fluid. I mean, this stuff is not going to evaporate or anything. It's not going to go bad. It's been good forever and ever. Probably have a half dozen uh, of these. And then there's one of these in every one of the kits, and I've got at least three or four of these kits. So, you know, I've got plenty of Zippo hand. And then I've got also the Zippo hand warmer fluid. I don't know if it's a different fluid or not. It has, it's a different bottle, so I, I use the right one for the right appliance, whatever, I guess. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Yes, I agree. Uh, disposable ones. They have what I like most about the Zippos is they're pretty much windproof, and and so even in in the stronger scales, I was able to light a cigarette, so I'm confident I could start a fire with the Zippo. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Miss Wilson. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, As a matter of fact, uh, I have communicated with Steve, and he is coming back. I don't know when, uh, but he will be coming back. And, and remember, he announced the title and showed the cover of Volume 6 on this show, on, on our channel. So we were very, very lucky to have that. I, I just really like him. Make sure you follow him on Integrative Preparedness. And uh, But, uh, yeah, he's doing the final edits now. So I will send him an email and ask him 
if he will come back here and make an announcement when it's published. We will interrupt our other series uh, to discuss book six when that happens. So, yes, I absolutely will. And uh, see what we can do to make that happen. Oh, yeah, that, that's the, the uh, uh, burns a matic flamethrower, absolutely. Well, you know, I had two in Boy Scouts, and, and it's not that difficult. Uh, it's just making sure you have the right trough cut so that you get that ember down at the bottom, the very, very bottom. That's going to fall onto another piece of wood, and that's going to be where you're going to start your fire with. So you want to have kindling available, uh, tinder and, and, and everything, so that you can get that to start. Uh, but it's just going to be an ember, so you got to really be careful with that ember. Uh, but I'm a I'm a lighter <laughs> and, and matches guy. I, I like things the easy way. Uh, so you know that's kind of where I am. Hello, Red Scout. Welcome. Uh, let me see here. Tracy Muckenfuss. Uh Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm sorry to hear that. So here is one of the things about fire that, that concerns me. In a grid down situation, we are all going to be using alternative forms of cooking. And cooking right now with an electric stove or with a gas stove indoors is hard enough. The number, the, the top two uh, causes of death for women in the Wild West were number, well, I'm going to say numbers one and two, but they, they you know, I'm, I'm not sure which is which. Uh, but the top two were childbirth and cooking. They had long flowing dresses. The hearth did not have a, a you know, the, the coals would actually come out into, onto the hearth or onto the uh, stone floor, let's call it masonry floor. And so a lot of times those long dresses that they were wearing would catch fire. And so uh, burns were and, and burning and burning to death were very common for women uh, back in the 1800s. And so that's one of the things I want us to be aware of is fire safety and how to cook with fire uh, in the case the grid goes down. That's also why, because we're going to be using kettles over flames and over charcoal, and we're going to be using coffee pots and grills and and, and grates and all kinds of stuff. So one of the things you're going to have to have plenty of is going to be sterile water so you can wash the wound and some sort of burn gel and a dry sterile dressing. And, you know, get those. I try to get as much burn gel as possible in my first aid kit because I'm afraid that we're going to have the same type of an 1800s atmosphere safety-wise with cooking and fires and and children and being around fires and, and the spread of fires. And yes, fires scare the living daylights. I think they should scare the living daylights out of everybody. Um, yeah, so support that. Yeah, you can do it. Hello, Watchman. Welcome. Um, so let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, and so Zippos, of course, if you if you like if you fill up a Zippo, if I were to fill this one up right now, it's not really sealed, uh, but the condensation factor on it is rather small, uh, as as long as you keep them stored in an upright position. If you store them on their sides, of course, then there is a leakage factor with it. Um, you know, and one of the things about lighter fluid, if you overfill your lighter, I can de definitely tell you it feels like a rash burn. Uh, it will put a, a burn on your on your leg. There was a story going about uh, back when I was in Germany the first time, and that was back in 74, 75. Uh, but the, uh, the Germans who wanted to avoid the draft would take Zippo lighter fluid and rub it on their face and it gave them this real bad rash and skin disease and everything else uh, that would clear up over a while. But it would be apparent while they were at the draft board, and that would get them a draft. I don't know the veracity of that story, but that's what they said. They said that 
uh, young German men who wanted to avoid the draft would rub Zippo lighter fluid on their face. Um, it, it can, but you can also just use bark. So for example, if you take the bark off of a birch tree and put that underneath your bow drill set, then that bark itself, it becomes the tinder. And that's, that's great as well. You have to be in the area has birch, however. So, you know, there, there are some things, there are some trees that are, um, you, if you had a piece of, um, oh, what's it called in the pine tree, when it steps that it comes down and um, it coagulates and it's, it's a, it's a uh, natural flammable material. Um, and, and so you can get that from pine trees, pine resin. And same thing there. If you have a small patch of that underneath, that will catch fire readily. Uh, what's that called? Um, I'll think of it here. So the flip top has no seal. You're correct. Yeah, they will over time. Absolutely. They will dry out over time. Um, but you know, I mean, uh, I would, I would probably keep this aside and use up all of my Bix before I would use my Zippos. Uh, but you know, I mean, and I would also try to use up all my matches before I go to my Zippos. But you know, my number one go-to is going to be this rechargeable guy, this electric rechargeable. That's, you know, USB rechargeable. That's everything that I'm getting right now. Prepping wise, I'm trying to get is USB rechargeable. I just got in um, last week, and I'm, I'm going to do a video on it tomorrow morning, a uh, fruit, vegetable, edible, uh, let's call it edibles, a food uh, sterilizer from uh, Mira Safety. And, oh, gosh, does it, and, you know, to make me really happy, it is USB rechargeable. So, uh, as a matter of fact, right now I'm charging the USB uh, uh, sterilization system, and I'll, I'll have that ready for a demo tomorrow morning and I'll take that and get it out. I just did finish doing this week's uh, prepper haul. I did forget one item in my prepper haul, and but I'll put it in next week's. And this, so I did get a radiation sensor. So remember I showed you I have a Geiger counter in my everyday bag. Geiger counters are for less than one Rentgen per hour, one rad per hour. This is a sensor, so that goes up higher. So my, my, um, uh, my, my Geiger counter uh, that is, is good for indoors where you don't have that much uh, radiation. But if you expect to have a lot of radiation, you want to know whether or not you're getting. So it's 100, 300, 600. So 100 rads, you can, or you're safe if you accumulate those. 300, there's a 50% chance of death. Six, 600 rads accumulation, and you are dead. You know, that's all there is to it. So this is one of those that measures those higher numbers of rads so you know to stay inside instead of going outside. That's called a, a radiation sensor. Uh, so um, let me get up here. And yeah, the sap from pine trees. But what's it called? What's that when the, uh, when we go out looking for it? We cut it up and take it off and and. Uh, Oh, gosh, what is that called? Uh, we, we will think of it. Somebody here is going to be far smarter than me, and they will remember. <clears throat> fatwood. That's what it is. That, that's what it's called, fatwood. Thank you, Dragon Slayer. Uh, so that's the pine sap. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. And, and so that's what I was saying earlier is I have one of those little bitty goal zero things. Then I have a Jackery 1000 uh, that I'll use for some things. I also have a solar powered freezer. Uh, and so one of the things I want to be is I'm going to be the, the neighborhood ice man. So I'm going to take that freezer out back and I'll freeze bottles of water. I'll freeze ice cubes and stuff like that. And so that'll be one of the things I provide to the neighborhood is ice uh, and as, as a uh, uh, barter item, you know, kind of a unique barter item. But, uh, you know, that's what I plan on doing. Uh, then, of course, we have a whole house system here. So uh, I have 24 panels and I have battery backup. So I think we're pretty well stationed, pretty well taken care of here. The only thing I, 
the, the two things I have left to do is I want to get the, uh, I, I paid for it today. So it's been ordered and everything else. I'm going to get the uh, rain catchment system installed in the next four to eight weeks. And uh, that's going to give me an additional 500 gallons of water uh, for, that I can change into potable water through the filtration systems we talked about earlier. And, and it was a good thing that this was the topic tonight because Helen and I, once I paid for the filtration system for, for the uh, water catchment system and talked to the gutter guy about today about extending the gutters, she said, now, how are we going to purify it? So I had to show her where all the purification stuff was in the garage and talk about the different ways we do things. I said, don't worry, I've got an SOP in this three ring binder and it'll tell you everything we need to do. So, um, you know, so I, I think she feels a lot better about that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, okay, so we're still talking about trying to make um, char cloth. Um, I've heard, I don't know, I have heard that denim is, is a good char cloth, but you know, uh, I think that's a that's another form of cotton, isn't it? I think. Um, So for the Geiger counter, for the, for the low radiation dosage, I have an ESG. Let me, I, let me get into my everyday bag here. And of course, it's going to be down at the bottom. So uh, this is my Geiger counter, GQ Electronics. Okay. So this is low dosage radiation. And then for a sensor for high dosage radiation, uh, I have this one. And this is, you know, see, see the difference? This one says nuclear radiation detector, whereas this one says Geiger counter. Okay. So this is low dosage, high dosage. So you have to have both. You have to have this one to tell you, whoa, something happened. And then this one to tell you it's safe to go outside, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, about fatwood or... So um, I, I did a, a video last weekend or weekend before this one, and I put out five uh, nuclear fallout films from the 1950s and 60s. <clears throat> and uh, I think they're fairly accurate. So you can take something like a, a very sturdy table and place it in the center of your house away from windows uh, make sure you have some coverage as far as a door frame or something like that. But take a very sturdy um, table or something like that. Pile it with books. Any kind of, you're looking for mass. You're looking for things uh, that, that are heavy and thick. And, you know, we, we talked about you want time, distance, and shielding. So you're looking for stuff that's going to shield you, cause that gamma radiation to lose its energy as it's trying to penetrate all these different things to get to you. So number one, look where is the radiation going to be coming from? So as I have a single story house. So chances are if I have fallout, it's going to be accumulating on my roof and then it's going to be accumulating on the ground next to the house. I'm not worried about the walls that much. I'm going to be worried about the ground. I'm going to be worried about the roof. So remember, radiation travels in one direction and one direction only. So I want to get myself a nice little barrier of heavy stuff, books, uh, jugs of water, whatever, uh, to try to keep that radiation from penetrating in. You're going to keep yourself covered from all sides uh, because, you know, that ground radiation can be coming in as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, you can also dig something. If you have a basement, go to the basement. Um, you know, look for the room in your house that has the least exposure to outside walls and has some sort of barriers in between the outside walls and where you're going to be staying. <clears throat> I 
Yes. Uh, so fat wood collects in usually at the lowest point in, in um, pine trees, any evergreen tree. Yeah, but pine trees. And uh, it, 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 it is a, a flammable sap. Let's put it that way. Yes, and, and it is a, a very visible, I'm going to call it orange. I, I think it's kind of an orange color. Uh, but, you know, different people see different things. But you can definitely tell it's going to be different from the different color than the rest of the wood. Uh, that's for certain. And it's also going to be a different consistency. It's going to be more rosiny uh, than will. Uh, I, I mean, I could go out to the garage and get you some and show you. But uh, Fantastic. I'm jealous. Uh, that's that's going to be do you extremely well. I am quite certain. Um, yeah, so if you can if you can get a whole bunch of those uh, uh, x-ray shielding vests, I guess you call them, I don't know. Uh, that would be a fantastic thing to, to uh, put on top of a table or, or surround yourself with, and that would be a fantastic little fallout shelter. Um, I would say it's important, but I'm not going to say it's the number one thing, but yeah, yeah, you, you want to make sure you have a way out. You want to make sure you have two ways. Uh, one way in and two ways out. Uh, and so that's where that emergency escape hatch comes, is, is the second way out in case the first way, your, your normal way in is discovered or breached or they're trying to breach it, then you have an emergency exit. So think of it as a front door and a back door. Everybody goes to your front door and they want to come in through your front door. Uh, but while they're trying to come in your front door, you can run out the back door. So that's that's the purpose of it. And yes, I wholeheartedly agree. Um well, so Red Scout, that's that I try to stay away from two things. I, I try to stay away from religion, uh, especially when we're talking about nuclear fallout, because number one, there are some people who believe some false things about religion and say, I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to be raptured away before all this happens. And so they have this fatalistic attitude that religion is going to protect them from the trials and tribulations. Uh, and so uh, I, I don't want to encourage that. I, I, I don't want to get people into that mindset that they don't have to prepare, that they're going to be whisked away for the second coming number one in preparation for second coming number two. And, and so all that stuff that is anti-biblical, uh, I don't want to give people a false sense of security. Number two, um, if you take a look at what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, less than 25% of the population died either from direct exposure or from long-term radiation exposure. So of those populations, 25% died, 75% survived. So if we take that and then we mass, mass it throughout the United States, we can say that there's going to be a very high survival rate. If you're prepared, you're going to have a far better chance of surviving than the unprepared person. And so, you know, there's there's a, uh, if I have can have one of my, uh, um, moderators put the link to nuke secrecy. Let me, let me see if I can do it here. Uh, but I want to show you something. I, I don't know how to show you on the screen. I'll have to learn. Maybe I can learn that here soon. But nuke secrecy, uh, nuke map. There we go. If you go to uh, nuke map, which is uh, by Alex Wellerstein. So it's nuke map.org. Um, and you're going to, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up a map and you can take that pointer and point, put that pointer on what you figure is going to be your primary target in your area and then do it and then pick, I mean, pick the SAR bomb, but it won't be able to make it this far because it's got to be delivered by an aircraft. It can't be delivered by an ICBM. Do a SAR bomb, I mean, for, for crying out loud and see the amount of, of, of devastation that's going to happen. <clears throat> do both an air burst and a ground burst. Now, remember, an air burst, the fireball never touches the ground, so there is not that much fallout. With a ground burst, the fireball does touch the ground. It irradiates the ground, takes it up into the sky, 
turns it into a radioactive dust, and that radioactive dust is what goes out in the wind plume, and that's what we call fallout. So uh, play with both of those. And what you're going to find is that the fallout that we initially expected back in the 50s and 60s is not going to be near as devastating as we thought it was going to be in the 50s and 60s. And even then, we did not think it was going to be a total annihilation of the Earth. Now, let's do a little bit of reality check here. Why do people want to destroy the population of the United States? So that they can get our resources. So if you want to get the resources of a country, why would you use a thermonuclear device that creates fallout that's going to contaminate that country for decades? You're going to use something that kills the people, but allows you to take the resources, and that's going to be an airburst. In my opinion, this is just Lee talking, Number one threat to our country is a cyber attack that takes down our grid, that turns our uh, sewage systems into poison, that turns our drinking water systems into poison. That's our number one threat, in my opinion. Number two threat is going to be a satellite as an electromagnetic uh, pulse device. So one of those geosynchronous satellites that the Russians have above us is going to blow up, and that's going to cause an EMP. Now, the reason I say it's a satellite and not an ICBM is because we've got satellites to detect an ICBM launch. The minute we detect an ICBM launch and that missile starts coming towards North America, one of two things is going to happen. Either we're going to have a counter-strike or we're going to launch our anti-ballistic missile missile. <clears throat> Remember, we gave up building shelters in the 60s and 70s because we wanted to focus on anti-ballistic missile defense. So the whole theory changed from protecting the population and shelters and, and spending all that money to buying a good anti-missile missile, destroying that missile before it had a chance to detonate in our country. So there's all kinds of things that say, you know what? I'm going to survive. And chances are you're going to survive too. Uh, so I try to downplay all those people who uh, are fatalists. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, because I want to build hope, hope, and, and trust, and uh, uh, maybe we can rebuild a better society with what we're giving. Yeah, so my, my, my sensor uh, radiation device is the other company, and that's this one here. That's the, uh, so this is made by uh, Humda Geiger Counter Company. I'll I'll uh, I'll put the link for that. that. I got that from Amazon. I'll put the link for it in in the uh, uh, thing that comes out tomorrow morning. Yes, they are building bunkers like crazy because they did not focus their money on anti ballistic missiles. We did. So you either destroy the threat before it comes into your country, or you allow it to come into your country, detonate, and then you protect your citizens after detonation. Two totally different. Uh, uh, thought processes. No problem. No, no problem. I, I appreciate you being here. So you don't ever think that you're, you're, you're being anything other than a fantastic participant. I really appreciate you. Um, okay. We're still talking about uh, fat there. Okay. Um, yes, we still trust God and, and, you know, whatever his will is, is will be done. And, and, uh, and, and I wholeheartedly agree there, but I also want to stop all the fatal fatalism and the false beliefs that we're going to be, uh, that first Thessalonians one, four is different from Matthew 25 or different from Revelations 12. It's not. It's all the same thing. So there's not a separate coming, uh, because if you if you say that First Thessalonians one four is the 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 the, the rapture and that every all the living and dead are going to be raised, then why is there a second coming? What would he come back for? Because all the living and dead have been raised. So I mean, we can get into a lot of theology about this. And and if it was such a solid foundation, then why is there such disagreement among Protestants over? 
uh, whether it's premillennial, midmillennial, or postmillennial, uh, as far as the rapture. So, I mean, so so I try to stay away from religion uh, because you know there there are different uh, beliefs. However, I, I try to also keep it to where what I want to do is I want people to be assured of the fact that they can take preventive measures now that will give them a higher probability of surviving than other people around them. And that even with what we saw in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there still is a good chance of survival. Um, Okay, so that's those, those, so there's a third device, okay, so you have the sensor device, and the sensor device tells you when there's high radioactivity. Then you have the Geiger counter, which tells you when there's low radioactivity. There's a third instrument called a dosimeter, D-O-S-I-M-E-T-E-R, and that looks like a pin, okay, like this, and, and you can also get it on a card where it fits in your wallet. Uh, but when I was working at the nuclear power plant, uh, we had a pin and it would fit in our pocket and then you had, and then you could look through it and it had a little bar and it would tell you how much radiation you had accumulated in your body. And so, uh, so you carry a dosimeter with you. So the keys there are 100, 300, 600. Okay. So it's safe for you to have on your dosimeter 100 rads or rentgens of, of radioacti like radioactivity if you have that, you will be sick, uh, but there's a good chance you're going to survive. Once you get to 300 rads, then you're extremely sick and there's a 50% fatality rate. Once you get to 600 rads of accumulated uh, radiation, then that's 100% fatal. And you know anything above that also is gonna be 100% fatal. So you know that's 100, 300, 600, the three numbers you wanna remember there. I hope I hope I have that right. I'll look it up. Um, so the way St. Thomas Aquinas said it is um, that to those who believe, no proof is necessary. And to those who don't believe, no proof is sufficient. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, but, but we're talking different things. And this is not a religious channel, okay? Uh, we're talking about survivability in a nuclear fallout situation. And we're talking primarily about water and flame tonight. And that's, I would like to keep the, keep it focused on that. There, there are religious channels out there and I would strongly encourage you to go there. And, and if you want to talk religion, that's a, a great place to do it. But I would like to focus here, this discussion on survival. Okay. And uh, that's, that's my focus. Uh, so if you want to, to do something else, you can go, there are other places where you, where it's probably more appropriate for you to do that. Uh, uh, a lot of Catholics were like what? Don't believe in the second coming. I mean, the, uh, uh the rapture. Yeah because we study a lot of the Bible. That's why. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so, so you can go out in the forest and find it, especially in a fallen. If you find a tree, a tree stump, that's going to be a fantastic place. Uh, it also coagulates kind of in branches where branches meet the main trunk. That's a good place to find it as well. And uh, so, you know, tree stumps and uh, anywhere where the, the branches come off of a, of a trunk. That's going to be a fantastic place to find fatwood. There is a company, and I really like the guy. He's out of Seattle, Washington. I'll have to see if I can't find him. He might still be in business. I bought it probably about a dozen years ago. But he was taking wood, uh, softwood, pine wood, and then under pressure, putting 
turpentine, basically fat wood, under pressure inside the wood. So he was creating artificial fat sticks and selling them. And I, I don't know if he's still in business or not. I'll, I'll look and see if I can't find that. And if I did, if I can find it, then I'll, I'll find a way to get that information to you. <clears throat> Watchman, I would really like to have that verse and, and uh, that chapter verse and book. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so Triple G Farms, yeah, that's it. NuclearSecrecy.com, the new map, new map. Take a look at it. You're going to be astonished. Uh, your chances of surviving are actually fairly, fairly good. Um, yes, you can. Um, now, so I also did a video uh, taking the tuna can. And it doesn't work now with these new pop-top type lids. But if you have the old one where you have to use a can opener, and I always use the safety can opener, the one that opens from the side, so you can put the lid back on top of the can. But I take tuna cans, and then I stuff them full of cardboard with the corrugation running up and down. Then I melt paraffin and fill that in. And that's what we did in Boy Scouts. That was our mobile stove in Boy Scouts. And I carried that on Phil, to, through Philmont Scout Ranch. And I had two of them that lasted me the entire two weeks. Uh, but you know that now you're creating basically kind of like a sterno stove with uh, the styrofoam. I'm uh, not the styrofoam, but the uh, the cardboard and the paraffin, and it's a fantastic little stove. So yeah, penny sto penny alcohol stoves. The problem is you're going to have the have the alcohol, uh, but you can make the same thing. You can do a, a, a paraffin stove, and that would be fantastic as well. Um, you're welcome, Joseph G. Yes, that would be a fantastic way to do it. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and, and thank you for saying that because I think that may be what I have to do here in my little one-story small house. Golly, are there that, really that many comments? Golly, am I far behind. Uh, let me see if I can't catch up here with some of these longer ones. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they are. So those are just depleted uranium rods that they were going to launch uh, from a satellite. Whether that satellite actually got launched or not, I don't know. That was one of President Reagan's deals. Uh, and remember, that was part of that uh, uh, space race that caused the fall of the Soviet Union in 1989. Um, I agree. I, th I think that is... Uh, So let's see. So Hello Tofu put the nuke secrecy map up there. Just kind of keep that in your, uh, as a tool. So one of the things I do every morning is, uh, after I do my morning prayers, uh, I go to windy.com, W-I-N-D-Y.com, and that tells me the prevailing winds so that I know which, which direction to be concerned about a nuclear explosion coming from. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to do the same thing. Great idea, Jennifer. I, I, I really love that idea, and, and I'm going to try to... Let's go back up here and pin that. Where was it you said that? There, let's pin that one. How do I pin it? Okay, so show... I don't know how to pin it. Oh, well. Um, anyhow, that just... Gosh, you got some great ideas, Jennifer. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see what we got here. So, Red Scout, it sounds like well, I am not the right channel for you. It's it, it, If you're going to be that fatalistic, uh, then I would recommend you go to a different channel. Um, you know, I... I, I I, I, I wish you would stay, uh, but we are talking about surviving, and uh, you know we don't we aren't fatalists here. And so, if you want to be a fatalist and uh, and throw your hands up and put it all somewhere else other than the, the fact that we can do things for ourselves, um, you know, then then I would encourage you to go somewhere where that's going to be appreciated and people are going to respect that opinion. Uh, 
because uh, you know I, I'm, I'm going to say we either stop the conversation you're having now or I'm going to ask my uh, moderators to put you in timeout because we're not here to discuss religion. We are here to discuss survival. If you are not interested in survival, please leave, go somewhere else. Okay. And moderators, if he continues, then I'm going to say put him in timeout. After, if he doesn't learn after timeout, then let's just go ahead and block him. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't like uh, General Milley, and, and I have not since he admitted that he told the Chinese that he would provide them with advance warning if Trump decided to launch a preemptive nuclear strike. That's not his job. And um, so I, I, I lost all respect for him. Then. And now he, he's put uh, critical race theory into the uh, uh, curriculum at, at, at West Point. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things that, uh, you know, just... He's not my guy. Let, let me put it that way. Uh, and I think that's great, let alone prepper. Uh, okay. Well, and, and here's something that I don't know if you remember it or not, but back in 1998, maybe it was in the early 2000s, there was a Supreme Court decision that uh, and nuclear power plants did not want pregnant women working in a nuclear power plant because it was proven that the exposed, that the, the continuous exposure uh, could cause birth defects in the fetus. And uh, somebody took that to court and they said, hey, they can't, that's my choice, uh, whether or not I'm irradiating my fetus. It's not their choice. And uh, so uh, there was a Supreme Court decision that said that you cannot withhold uh, working for a pregnant woman uh, in a nuclear uh, facility, <clears throat> even out of concern for their safety. Uh, that, you know, that's a choice that, that they have to freely make. <clears throat> and so... There, there's a very small crew. What happens is in a nuclear power plant, each one of the reactors has uh, six different sets of rods inside each reactor. And so they know exactly which sets of rods are which and when they were put in there. So every six months, the oldest one sixth of the rods are removed and new rods put in. And there's a special crew that travels around to all the different uh, um, nuclear power plants doing that. And then those spent rods, what they call spent rods, but they're really not, are put into the cooling pool next to the uh, reactors outside. <clears throat> but that way it keeps a constant amount of radiation so that it has a pr predicted amount of steam pressure that, it, that it's putting out. And uh, so a lot of those crew members who do that, who go in and change out those rods are female. Yes, the guys at Chernobyl were. Here, here's an interesting for you one for you. Do you know what Chernobyl means in in Russian? Cherno, C H E R N O, is uh, is black. So the actual adjective is Chorny, C H E R N N Y J, and then Buil is the past tense of Buit, which is to be. So Chernobyl it translates literally to it was black. Where are we doing as far as time? Oh, we're, gosh, we're way over time. Okay, let me go through these, then we'll try to get, get this all uh, wrapped up. <clears throat> okay. So the radiation inside the Fukushima reactors is so strong it kills the robots and it continuously leaking into the sea. Yes, and I just read an article yesterday or today where the Japanese are trying to get permission to release some of the less radioactive uh, water into the sea uh, so that they can put more radioactive water into the containment area and then try to try to neutralize it. So, but remember, it's not the water that's radioactive. It's the dissolved solids in the, in the water. So, um, 
when uh, when I was stationed in Germany is when Chernobyl blew and we weren't allowed to eat any dairy products or any uh, foods, uh, meats that came out, you know, the eggs, uh, chickens, pigs, etc. that came out of Germany for like six months. We had to have everything imported from the U.S. And we were prohibited from eating their cheese and other dairy products for a long time after that. I think it was about a year. Um, yes, try to get a mag together if you can. And, uh, you know, the, the more people, the better. Now, there is a, a, a maximum number. They say that about 150 people is the maximum number you're going to have in any one small, small effective working community. But, you know, even two is better than one. <clears throat> Yes, if you have a basement, Utah, Mike, that is a fantastic place, especially if it doesn't have um, uh, a windows. I don't, I'm not familiar with either one, so uh, I, I can't... Uh, can't comment on that, Grumpy Acres. So um, the what, what you want to do is uh, have some heavy plastic uh, uh, painters, plastic, you know, five mil, six mil, ten mil, and some masking tape. Not masking tape, but but uh, uh, duct tape. And so what you want to do is you want to put that plastic over your windows, over your doors and over your inlets uh, for your heater and air conditioner. And that way you're keeping a filtration system in effect of any, so you're keeping any of that radioactive dust from coming in. And as long as you can keep the dust from coming in, you're pretty safe breathing on the inside. Uh, there's probably enough room, air in your house for to keep you going for a while. But uh, you, know, you, want, you just wanna try to keep those radioactive fallout particles from coming in. And that's what the filtration system would do is remove those particles. Um, so um, yes, so potassium iodide is, it, they say is, is best for your thyroid and uh, protects your thyroid from any potential radiation. Uh, I, I will have a guest on next Monday and she argues over the efficacy of it. Uh, so, you know, um, yeah, and, and, and that's that's one of the points that she makes, Utah Mike, is <clears throat> for those of us who are older, you know, the chances of dying of, of radioactive, of, of cancer, thyroid cancer, as a result of exposure to radiation, it's going to be long past when we're already done, gone. So, you know, it's not going to be that, that effective for us. <clears throat> uh, let me see here. Yes, and, and uh, that was something that was rudimentary that was used at Chernobyl. They did have some, some, uh, some effect with it, not as great as the potassium iodide. The other one that they also had real good results with was pectin. Uh, so it's for some reason, the pectin would absorb a lot of the radiation inside the body and then be expelled, uh, especially apple pectin. Uh, so, so they started getting a lot of applesauce into the people, and that... <clears throat> that seemed to help, uh, but, um, you know, uh, those are some things you might want to consider. Th there's a lot of good research that you can look up and, and find out. Um, let me see. Thank you, Hello Tofu. And... And, and that's, I, I think I've told you several times here, here in my neighborhood, we have 120 houses. Uh, before uh, Ice Mageddon, Snowmageddon 1, I, I told people we need to get together and plan for dire circumstances. Uh, we had Snowmageddon 1, I gave away heaters, small space heaters and, and, st and small sterno stoves and everything <clears throat> to all kinds of people. And then uh, uh, we had the, the period after, I put out a two-page letter, lessons learned from, from Snowmageddon. We need to get together and form a group and, and talk about what we're going to do to survive should this happen again. The same two people who showed up at the first meeting showed up at the second meeting. Then we just had Snowmageddon uh, 2.0 here in January. Same two people. I mean, there are those people who want to do something. 
There are those people who don't. <clears throat> and, you know, so my goal is to reach as many of those people who want to do something and help them. And they help me because even though I've been doing this since 1962, I learn something new every single day. Uh, and that's like, who was it? Uh, Jennifer Wilson saying that those aprons are available on Amazon. Yeah, now it's time to order a couple of those. Um, so I, I, I learn, you know, stuff all the time. Um, wow, I'm sorry to hear that, Pat. I'll tell you what, my grandsons would love that. Boy, they would be happy there. <clears throat> Um, so in, anyhow, this topic is, is prohibited on uh, YouTube, so we really can't talk about it. However, what I can tell you is that the FDA has put out an edict that even for your poor fish, if they get sick, they're going to have to have a veterinarian's note in order to buy those. So if that's what you want to do, make sure you do that quickly uh, before that goes into effect. I believe it goes into uh, effect uh, July 4th. First. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's it. Uh, yes, so I recommend the Jace case for antibiotics. That's really fantastic. There's a link down below if you want it. Uh, <clears throat> it'll save you $10. <clears throat> but it's it's a fantastic way to save uh, or to get some prescription medications, especially antibiotics. <clears throat> So Ms. Wilson is talking about, yes. So, and that, that's another thing. If you look at it, I have a small PPE that I keep in my truck and I keep it in the, in the car too. I keep one for each passenger or passenger space in both vehicles, but it's got uh, painter's booties. So you can keep from walking in the radioactive fallout. You can take that off before you get into your house. A poncho, a $1 poncho from, from uh, Walmart to keep the majority of the radioactive dust off of you. An N95 uh, filter mask can't cover your face. Of course, it's not going to do me any good. I'll have to shave before I put that on to have any good. You need a good seal. Some goggles to protect your eyes as well. Then with your, with your uh, uh, poncho, you're going to have a hood. So I also recommend a triangular bandage that you can use or a bandana. So you're going to get a good seal of that hood from your... Uh, uh, rain poncho over your head, and then some good nitrile gloves. And with that, you've got a pretty good PPE system. You can take all that off, doff that as soon as you get back home before you go into the house. Don't carry it into the house, but uh, then you, you can get rid of a lot of the radioactivity that way as well. Um, you're quite welcome. June. Okay. So I, I thought it was July, but June. I'll, I'll take your word at it. That's a... That's, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me see here. No, but I have heard about it. I, I really like him, and I, I, I think I would look, try to get that uh, as soon as I can see it, uh, as soon as it's available. So <laughs> there are some of them you do, uh, you know, because you can overdose, and and. Uh, you know, we, I, I, my wife overdosed on vitamin D one time, believe it or not. And uh, so, yeah, you can't overdose on it. Guys, we're almost at an hour and a half, but <laughs> two very short chapters, less than uh, 40 pages. And look what we've done. We've turned this into a major discussion. So um, let's take these last three here. Cheddar Pepper Prepper says over three years ago, had his doctor check his PSA very high. They determined he had a very aggressive prostate cancer. Uh yeah, men over 40 get your PSA checked. Absolutely. Um, okay, so Pat, um, absolutely. So one of my, my, my mother had bipolar syndrome. And in the last five years, she had Alzheimer's or, or dementia. And she turned into a very pleasant person the last five years. And she didn't know who I was, but she was extremely pleasant. Uh, so I, I can empathize. Um, I, I know 
the trials and tribulations and uh, also the frustration of you know being uh, a child that the parent doesn't recognize so um supplements are wide open absolutely uh, so i was talking last night about that one that you know three greens and the three uh red ones that the they're supposed to be a full meal basically in pills and so uh, uh what a great thing okay so i think it's time for us to quit so i'm going to ask you uh please remember that we're all in this together uh you know one country one nation under god um, there's way too much divisiveness in our country right now. We've got to understand that we are in this together. We Americans are, are being challenged by the world. And so we need to unite and stand with each other, give up our ideological differences, give up our color differences, our, our cultural differences, our race differences, and, and unite and survive because we can survive. So we're all in this together so we can come out the other side together. Please be kind, polite, and respectful to each other because togetherness is the key. Thank you all so much for being here and the wonderful comments in the comments this evening. Please stay safe. And I will see you next Monday uh, when we will be interviewing Potpourri Prepper. And then Tuesday night, we'll come back to this book and we'll be doing it again. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.